reaching to the heavens, fueled by the earth below, pulled by the sky. It is the rise of the cover crop, and they are out of control. Morning, morning, morning. Happy Friday. Thanks for watching the video today. I'm your host, Diego, D-I-E-G-O. I'm a podcaster, I'm a YouTube, and I'm coming to you from a foggy and damp Southern California right now. This video is all about a cover crop experiment that I'm running. Three rows of cover crop versus four rows of the exact same cover crop. Which row produces more biomass in total? That's what we're gonna find out in this video coming up. Oh, this week, it's cover crops and they are out of control. As you watch this video, you're gonna actually be going through this experiment with me because I'm not quite sure which one of these rows produced more biomass just looking at them. I'm gonna discover the result as you do. Well, maybe you'll get it a little bit later, but we're gonna find out together. So let's meet the stars of today's show. Today's show is all about this plant right here. This is mustard that I planted as a cover crop about two and a half months ago. The only difference between these rows are three rows of mustard, four rows of mustard. Everything else around this mustard was the exact same in terms of my inputs. The soil's not different. The amount of water that they received isn't different. I didn't do anything to affect their growth other than planting them one extra row here. So what we need to find out is where is there more biomass in this row or this row? In thinking about this experiment, there's a few possible outcomes. One is they're both equal. Regardless of whether it's four rows or three rows, we're gonna harvest all of this. I'm actually gonna weigh it. And when we do the weight, this row and this row are gonna be about the same. Same amount of biomass, irrespective of rows. Another scenario we could see is more biomass in the three row bed than the four row bed. What would explain that? Well, maybe you have bigger, thicker, more robust plants in the three row bed. And even though there's less of them, the ones that there are there are just larger versus the other outcome, which might be the four row bed might have more biomass. Maybe the plants are smaller, but there's more total plants. So you have more total biomass. But then again, we may get into this and we're gonna look at individual plants and say, these plants and these plants, for the most part, they look about the same. So if they're about the same, this row is gonna be the winner because there's just more of them. Now, why do I wanna do this experiment in the first place? Well, one, it, it kind of comes down to seed. You know, I'm saving 30% more seed by going three rows than four rows. I'm adding that extra row of seed. Now, it's not that expensive, but why use it if you're not getting a return? If, if I can get just as much biomass with three rows, why not use that? Another big reason I'm looking to do this is to establish a protocol for the future. I don't wanna be monkeying around saying, is it three rows or four rows? And sometimes I do four, sometimes I do three. I'm gonna do this experiment. I'm gonna test it over a series of iterations, find out which one works, and that's gonna kinda of be the gold standard. It's set, we're never changing it, we're never going back. It's either gonna be three rows or four rows at the end of the day. So let's start taking a look at these plants. So visually, just looking at these two rows, they more or less look the same. It's really hard to tell which row has bigger plants. Now the row on the right, the three row bed, definitely has a little bit higher plants in the middle but it's also got some zones like this at the very beginning that have a lot shorter plants. Now, maybe this shorter plant is due to localized soil conditions. Maybe it's due to shading from the bed on the left. Maybe it's due to some shading from the tree that I'm actually standing under right now. If we throw out this early section of the row and just focus on this back section here, they look about equal. There's no dominant winner. You can't look at that and say, one of those is Spud Webb, one is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, no doubt about it. These are really close in size. The next step is I'm gonna start looking at individual plants so we can compare them 
side by side. What I'm gonna do is walk into the row, I'm gonna stop someplace, close my eyes, grab a plant in my left hand, grab a plant in the right hand, pull out those plants, and we'll take a look and see what they look like. And I'll do that at several points along the row. Okay, so here we have two plants. The roots from each plant, more or less the same. I think the caliper or the diameter of plants, if I'm comparing them, the three row bed plant is thicker than the four row plant in terms of stem. If I'm trying to weigh them just by hand, I don't even wanna guess, it's too close to tell. Visually looking at the plants, maybe slightly more greenery here versus here. I think you could see that in this video. That's one sample, let's go pull another. Looking at these two and going by feel, I can definitely tell this is the fatter, juicier plant, the Kim Kardashian of plants versus the one in the four row. So the three row is definitely thicker. Uh, probably more biomass on this one versus this one. So in the scheme of things, here's your winner. So right now two for two in terms of visual observation on the three row bed in terms of just being bigger plants. But let's not forget, that's not the whole story here. Just because it has bigger plants doesn't mean the total bed will have more biomass. That's gonna come down to the final weigh-in. But I'm gonna still pull one more sample and we'll see what they look like. All right, now looking at the other sample here, number three, again, no doubt about it, fatter, juicier, more Kim Kardashian-y, here, thinner, uh, less total mass involved. Uh, if you look at the roots, they're not too different. You have your three row here, your two row here. They look about the same at the root level, but the middle of the stem, I'd say is 50% thicker in the three row versus the four row. So there's, three random samples that I pulled at three random points in the row, and the three row bed, sorry, the three row bed, yeah, had bigger plants in each case. One thing I was really wondering going in and doing this experiment was how different the roots might look. I was thinking you might have more total root mass in the three row versus the four row bed because the roots just have more room to expand. Maybe it's just a mustard thing and maybe I'm just pulling them up too aggressively, but there's just not much root on either one. Now, obviously there's a lot of fibrous, real thin thread-like roots that I can't see below surface, but visually not much different in the roots. Now for the final test. The final test involves actually weighing these beds. So that means I gotta get harvesting. I'm not gonna be harvesting these at ground level yet. Let me pause here to take a minute just to explain the goal of cover crops in the first place, at least how I'm using them. My goal with cover crops is to increase below ground biomass from the cover crop roots and grow as much above ground biomass as I can to use as compost feedstock. So if I was cropping this out and I was gonna plant another cover crop or vegetables into here, I would cut this off right at or slightly below surface leaving the roots and composting the tops. But I'm not gonna do that yet because I'm not really ready to plant vegetables in here. I don't need to yet. So instead, what I'm gonna do is mechanically graze this. I'm gonna go through with a sickle and I'm going to harvest all of this row and all of this row about six to eight inches off the surface of the ground. My goal is to have it regrow. So I will just compost the tops at that point and leave the roots and the lower stems in the ground to regrow. Why harvest them at ground level if I can get some good regrowth out of them? It just saves me the seeds. It saves me a lot of time because those plants don't have to reestablish themselves. They just have to kind of heal and regrow. Market gardeners do it a lot at the salad mix level. Well, let's do it with some cover crops. So we're just gonna shear them off leave them, and we'll weigh all the biomass.
Here's part of one row. I'm going to weigh that. I'm going to use a simple game scale like you can get on Amazon. I put a link to this one below. It's just part of the row, not all the row, part of the row on a tarp. I'm going to put this through it, hold it up. I'm holding it because I don't have a tree to hang this off of a branch. So I'm going to have to be the tree and I'm going to have to be the branch. We'll see how it works. Interesting. Have the weight. I'm not going to show you now. You're going to have to watch the whole video to find out how much this weighed. All right. One row down, one row to go. The numbers are in. Stay tuned. That's it. That's the final weigh in. Now let's tally up the totals and see what it looks like. So here are the two piles, pile A and pile B. Which one's bigger? I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but pile A right here is clearly visually larger than pile B. So what do you think? Is this three rows or is this four rows? What's your guess? Now that everything's been cut, here's what the rows look like. I'm thinking these are going to grow back here. We'll have to see. Some of the stems are pretty thick and these mustard stems really are like straws after cutting hundreds of them open. You just see these big tubes sticking out of the ground. Will they come back? I think they will. We'll see. So I'm going to let these grow back and harvest them again. Now let's get on to those numbers, the numbers that you've all been waiting for. The results are in. The totals are 148 pounds of biomass out of one bed, 114 pounds of biomass out of another bed. So one bed produced 30% more biomass by weight. Which one was it? Was it the four row bed or was it the three row bed? The four row bed produced 30% more biomass and ironically it had 30% more rows in it than the three row bed. It's a little surprising because as I was harvesting these, I noticed the three row bed had consistently thick, big stems where the four row bed had a lot of big, but a lot of small, like really small, yellow pencil small, and then fat, like not even my thumb, like my big toe fat. So I think it was just that cum accumulation, the, the sheer numbers game here, that won out for the four row bed. It just had more plants, those plants weighed more at the end of the day, and they outweighed the bigger, thicker, more consistent plants from the three row bed. There are some pros and cons to this. I kind of wish the three row bed produced more because the three row bed was easier to harvest. Rows are spaced wider. You're in there chopping with a knife. It's easier to grab and clump three rows than it is with four rows. Four rows is just more crowded, more difficult to harvest. Four rows uses more seed. Is that a big deal? Eh, not really. The seed is cheap, so it's not that big of a deal on my scale. So I'll throw that out. So between more seed, a little more harder to harvest, four rows is going to be your winner. Going forward, I'm probably gonna be planting four rows. Now I've also repeated that experiment with vetch, which you can't see down here, and with ryegrass, which you see up here. Which one of those is gonna work? Is that three or four? Time will tell. So for at least for mustard, we know, based on this experiment, at about four inch in row spacing, four rows per bed produce more biomass than three rows per bed on a weight basis. That's all for this one. Stay tuned next week where I'll be making a video where I show you how I'm making cold, slow compost out of all this biomass that I just harvested. That'll be coming up next week right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work.